Hello, I'm Teacher Riza. Welcome to my channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified as soon as I upload a new video. In this video, we will be learning the forms of covalent bonds, the single, double, and triple bonds. But let us consider the covalency number in order to determine how many bonds of an atom can have when it forms a compound. When we say covalency number, it refers to how many bonds of an atom can have when it forms a compound. It tells us how many electrons the atom can donate in order to form covalent bonds. Now look at your periodic table. What are the elements in family 1 or group 1A? These are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. What are their covalency number and charge? From the table you have their covalency number of 1, which means they can only have one bond, and an oxidation number of positive 1. How can we account for the charge positive 1? This indicates that they can give up only one electron. How about the elements in family 4 or group 4A? They have a covalency number of 4. That means they can form 4 bonds only. A good example is carbon atom. But what is that negative 4 to positive 4? What is the meaning of this value range? These values will tell us that carbon can have a charge of negative 4 to positive 4, depending on the type of compounds or ions it will form. Elements in family 17 or group 7A can carry a charge of negative 1. What does it mean? This means that the elements of this family can accept one electron. An example of these elements is a chlorine atom. And now let us define single, double, and triple covalent bonds. A single bond is formed when only one pair of the electron is shared between the two participating atoms. It is represented by one dash. Although this form of covalent bond has a smaller density, and is weaker than a double and triple bond, it is the most stable. For example, the hydrogen chloride molecule has one hydrogen atom with one valence electron and one chlorine atom with seven valence electrons. In this case, a single bond is formed between hydrogen and chlorine by sharing one electron. A double bond is formed when two pairs of electrons are shared between the two participating atoms. It is represented by two dashes. Double covalent bonds are much stronger than a single bond, but they are less stable. For example, carbon dioxide molecule has one carbon atom with four valence electrons and two oxygen atoms with six valence electrons. Each oxygen atom shares its two electrons with carbon and therefore there are two double bonds in carbon dioxide molecule. A triple bond is formed when three pairs of electrons are shared between the two participating atoms. Triple covalent bonds are represented by three dashes and are the least stable types of covalent bonds. For example, in the formation of a nitrogen molecule, each nitrogen atoms have five valence electrons, provides three electrons to form three electron pairs of sharing. Thus, a triple bond is formed between the two nitrogen atoms. And now let's answer this activity. Illustrate the bonding formation of the following covalent compounds below. Number one, oxygen gas. Number 2, carbon tetrachloride. 
Number 3, Sulfur Trioxide Number 4, Methane Number 5, Ethene Number 6, Ammonia And Number 7, Carbon Monoxide Number 1, Oxygen Gas Oxygen belongs to Group 6A and it has 6 valence electrons and 6 electron dots around. The covalency number is 2. Thus, oxygen can form double bonds between two oxygen atoms. Carbon tetrachloride In the carbon tetrachloride molecule, four chlorine atoms are positioned symmetrically as corners in a tetrahedral configuration joined to a central carbon atom by single covalent bonds. In sulfur trioxide, sulfur will be the central atom and will have three double bonds with oxygen. The methane molecule is held together by the four strong carbon-hydrogen covalent bonds by sharing electrons with four carbon-hydrogen single covalent bonds. Ethene has a double bond between the carbons and single bonds between each hydrogen and carbon. Each carbon requires a full octet and each hydrogen requires a pair of electrons. The Lewis structure of ammonia would be three single bonds hydrogen atoms bonded to a nitrogen atom in the middle with a lone pair of electrons on top of the atom. For the carbon monoxide Lewis structure, you'll need a triple bond between carbon and oxygen atoms in order to satisfy the octets of each atom. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Hope to see you again in my next video. Bye-bye!